Hello everyone and welcome back and thank you for joining me uh, for today's coding tutorial. So last week we looked at um, part two. Um, we had a look specifically at repeating functionality. This week we're going to have a look at more loops. So if we click on here, the learning objectives today are you are familiar with the condition of the while loop condition. You know how to use the for loop. You recognize situations where a while loop should be used and those where a for loop is more appropriate. Okay, let's have a look. So here you'll answer a questionnaire about motivation and study strategies. The questionnaire is known as MSLQ. Above there is a link to a questionnaire. Ah, oh, okay, I'll um, see you guys in a bit. I'll just quickly do this and I'll be back. And there we go. So the while true loop we've been using previously is very handy when the program has to repeat functionality until the user provides a certain input. Next, we'll come to know a few other ways to implement loops. So while loops with conditions. So far, we've been using a loop with the Boolean true in its parentheses, meaning the loop continues forever or until the loop is ended with the break command. Actually, the parentheses of a loop can contain a conditional expression or a condition, just like the parentheses of an if statement. The true value can be replaced with an expression which is evaluated as the program is executed. The expression is defined the same way as the condition of a conditional statement. The following code prints the numbers 1 to 5. When the value of the variable number is more than 5, the while condition evaluates to false and the execution of the loop ends for good. So here we've got our variable which has been initiated to 1. Um, and here instead of having true in between these parentheses, we've got um, while number is less than 6. It will repeat this, uh, it will print out the number and add one to the number. So it starts at one, it will come here, print out number one, add one to number one, so it becomes two, which is less than six, so it'll print it out again, it becomes three, and so on. And then here's the example here, stepping through. What you can see is that the value of number is being updated, and you can see how it's printing out the value of number here in our console. So as we continue through, uh, number becomes three, and then here it will print out three, number will become four, and so on until we get to six. So this is quite a good example showing you the steps in the loop. For loop is a little bit different. So above we learned how a while loop with a condition can be used to go through numbers in a certain interval. The structure of this kind of loop is the following. So int i, while i is less than 10, system out dot print i, and then i plus plus. So we could use um, a user input for i, it doesn't matter, um, but this is just to demonstrate the structure of the loop. The above loop can be split into three parts. First, we introduce the variable i, used to count the number of times the loop has been executed so far, and set its value to zero. Uh, so int i is equal to zero. This is followed by the definition of the loop. The loop's condition is i less than 10. So the loop is executed as long as the value of the variable i is less than 10. The loop body contains the functionality to be executed, which is a system.out.print, which is followed by increasing the value of i. So they've done i++, which is the same as i equals plus 1, uh, or you could do i plus equals 1 as well. And here's the comparison with a for loop. So a for loop has uh, three sections separated by uh, semicolons. So here we're saying that int i is equal to 0, while i is less than 10, and then we've got another semicolon, it will jump down here, print this out, and then it will do um, i++. Okay. A for loop contains four parts. One, introducing the variable for counting, the number of executions. Two, the condition of the loop. Three, increasing or decreasing, or basically changing, the value of the counter variable. And four, the functionality to be executed. So here it is. So four, introducing a variable, the condition, and then increasing the counter. So we've got a similar example to what we had above. So let's step through this or iterate through it. Uh, so i is equal to zero there. Uh, then i plus plus, so you can see it changed to one up here. And then we'll print out one and so on until we get to five. Oh, four, sorry, because it's less than five. If it was less than or equal to five, it would be five. But because it's less than five, uh, it stops at four. The example above prints numbers from 0 to 4. The interval can also be defined using variables. The example below uses variables start and end to define the interval of numbers the loop goes through. So here we go, we've got start is equal to 3, end is equal to 7. 
uh, i int i is equal to start, i less than end, i plus plus, and it will print out um, i there. Okay, so let's run through this one. The um, end is less than seven, it should keep going until we get to six. So we will continue practicing loops in the following exercises. You can use either a while loop with a condition or a for loop. Write a program that reads an integer from the user. Next, the program prints the numbers from zero to the number given by the user. You can assume that the user always gives a positive number. Below are some examples of the expected functionality. So we don't need any prompts, we don't need any S outs, um, but we do need to take an integer input and then create some sort of loop that's while, while it's less than the user's number or less than or equal to, it will print out um, these loops. So let's open our NetBeans. So that one was called counting. Excellent, there we go. So if we have a look on the top left, there's our project. So we're already on 14 already, so we again get them through these quite quickly. So let's open this. There we go. Okay, so we're going to need um, an integer. Oh, what's going on there? So we're going to need an um, int input is equal to scanner dot next int. As well as our int input, we will need a counter as well. So we can say uh, int count like that. Say count equals zero. So while count is less than input, we can say system out input and then we can do count plus plus. Okay, so what we're saying is that, it's say if the user enters three, because count has been initialized to zero, um, count will be less than input, it will add one, it become one, and then it will cycle through or iterate through until uh, input is less than three. We can do less than or equals to as well, which I think actually the program did specifically look like it was asking for. Um, if we were to do this as a for loop, we could say um, for, because we've already got count, we can use count. So count, actually let's just use int i equals zero, just the similar sort of example to what the um, University of Helsinki showed us. Um, we can say i less than input, and then i plus plus, and then we could do our system out, Actually, what do we need to... Oh, I guess it would be I, actually, wouldn't it? Let me have a look. So, it wants to print the count out, really. So let's put that there and then change that one to I. Let's give it a run locally. So remember, that's F6 on your keyboard. Wait for that to load up. Okay. So it's enter 4. So it goes through that quite quickly. Let's just drag this up. So... What we can do is just to make it a bit clearer, put an S out and then start of for loop. Run it again. So it's a bit challenging actually to know when your program's ready to run without using any prompts. Um, let's do three. So we've got uh, count is equal to zero, then it goes to one, two, then three. So that's the end of the while loop. And then here we've got the star or start of the for loop. Um, and that one actually says less than. So if we change that one to less than or equals to, or equal to, sorry, run that again. Let's say six. There you go. And then they both do exactly the same thing, but just in a slightly different method. I'm going to run that and see. I wonder if I'll get an error because I've got the two methods in there. So let's run that, and there we go, we're off to a good start, I think. I mean, the last one didn't really count because it was just a test. So we'll close this one. Let's head back to here, give it a refresh. Look at that, it's very satisfying, isn't it, knowing that all of those ones are done. Although there are quite a few to do, but that's fine, we'll get through them. 
So we've done that one. Uh, now we've got this next program exercise, which is counting to 100. So write a program which reads an integer from the user. Then the program prints numbers from that number to 100. You can assume that the user always gives a number less than 100. Below are some examples of the expected functionality. So if a user gives 99, it prints out 99 and 100. If they give minus 4, it prints out all of the numbers in between as well. OK. Let's get back to our NetBeans. Close that, open the project count into 100. So for this one, I will do a, um, I will use a for loop. So we'll need, what will we need? We need an integer, integer for input. So int input equals scanner dot next int. We don't necessarily need a counter for this because we initialize or create a counter inside the for loop. So we can say int normally it's i, but we'll go with c for count, is equal to 0. And then while m, uh, c is less than 0, uh, sorry, is less than input, and then c++, open and close our parentheses, and then system out c Give that a run and see what happens. So let's say 40. So what we probably want actually is while C is less than 100. That's printed all the way from. Okay, let's do this a bit differently because this is printed all the way from from zero, hasn't it? So int c is equal to input, while c is less than a hundred c plus plus. Let's try that. So let's do sixty. So we started at sixty, then we got sixty one all the way through to one hundred. Oh, but we didn't get 100, did we? We need less than or equals to 100. There we go. So now that we've got this one working, I'll write it out for a while loop. So we can say while input is less than or equal to 100, um, system out input, and then we can update input. So we can say input plus plus. I'll just put a, in fact, what I'll do is I'll comment this for loop out. So I'm selecting it using control and shift, and then I press control and forward slash on the keyboard, and it adds um, forward slashes, and it comments it out, so it won't run this code now. So let's run this locally. If I put in 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, excellent. Let's just give it one more run. Let's do minus 40. There you go, it's done all of that in sort of a fraction of a second, which is pretty impressive. Cool, excellent. Let's close that down and I will uncomment this. Oh, no, I won't. There we are, and then I'll delete this one out. And then let's give that a run. And there we go, another one passed. Excellent, so let's OK that. Close this down. Let's head back to here. So let's just give that a refresh. Perfect. So note that from now on, exercises can have multiple parts. All of the parts are counted as separate exercises. So for example, the following exercise counts as two separate exercises. Exercises with multiple parts can also typically be submitted, even if all parts are not ready. Points for the completed parts are added to your points count. Submitting a partial solution does not prevent you from submitting the full solution later on. OK. OK. So this exercise is the first two-part exercise. When you complete both parts, you'll get two points. So write a program which prints integers from 1 to a number given by the user. OK. 
and then on this version we need to ask the user for a starting point. Okay, let's do it. So let's start with part one. Let's get that here. All right, I'm just gonna go back here and just copy this and then put that in here. So write a program which prints the integers from one to a number given by the user. Okay, so we can do a for loop. So for int i equals one, uh, i is less than input, which I haven't made yet, so I'll make that in a minute. Uh, and we'll say, just double check this, that it's less than equal to. So yeah, equals to. And then, I plus plus, open close those, go back up here and include our integer. So int input equals scanner dot next int. Um, so we've done that, let's do a system out and then print out I. Let's give that a run and see what happens. Cool, that looks good. Let's give that a run and see what we get back. Okay, that's interesting. So it says that um, we've been awarded some points, but that we haven't completed all of them. That's fine, I just kind of wanted to see what happened. So we need to do the next section. So let's head back here. Um, where from? Ask the user for a starting point as well. Oh nice, okay. Okay. So let's go to our input. I'm going to change the name of this. So I'm going to press Control R on my keyboard and call this one start. And then I'm going to do int finish is equal to scanner.next int. And then we can say while i equals start and i is less than or equal to finish i plus plus let's give that a run and see what happens so i want to start at 10 and i want to go to 20. lovely let's give that one a run and see what we get back oh i forgot the um if statement so we need to put a bit of an if in there won't we so with the input 12, the output should be five numbers. It was zero. Oh, printing out the wrong. Hmm. Let's um, put this in. So if um, finish is less than start, we can just leave a blank there. Oh. I'll have to leave my S out. Let's just give this a quick couple of tests. So we'll do 40 and 50, so we get the printouts. And then let's do 50 and 40, and we don't get anything, that's fine. Brill. Okay, so let's give that a run and see if we still get an error back. Okay, so we didn't like that, that's fine. We'll just change our if statement the uh, different way around. So if that, we'll move this here. Delete that, that should get rid of the yellow error. Or the yellow warning, uh, yellow warning, and um, that needs to be moved back there, and that needs to be there. Okay, so with the input 12, the output should be five numbers, now it was zero. Okay, let's just have a quick look at this. So, ah, so this one has prompts, so let's get our prompts in there. So we'll add our prompt before each of the uh, inputs. So we'll say s out. So where from? 
or oh, where to, sorry. Ah, oh, where to, so that'll be this one. And then where from. Okay, let's give that a quick test. Oh, see the full stack trace. Oh, what have we got? Oh, I've got too many curly braces. There we go, let's delete some space there. And put some notes on. So, end of four. Um, end of main. End of class. There you go, that should keep us right. So let's just run this one. So from where did I put that in? Nope. Accidentally copied that. Let's try again. Nope, still running. Come on. There we go. So let's do 12 to 18. Lovely. Run it again with F6 and then do 18 to 12, perfect. Um, I'm gonna change that, oh actually I best not change it. I was gonna say I was gonna print it, change it to print. So if we run it this time, the statement and your input can go on the same line. So I've got like that rather than, than that way. That's just me being faffy. I, want, I don't know if it'll work, let's give it a run. It should do. So I've got another fail, that's fine. I'm going to double check the brief. So ask a user for a starting point, where from, uh, where to, where from, if the upper limit is larger than the starting, nothing is printed. Remember that the lower and upper limits can be negative. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to test it locally again. So 20 to 30. So we get all of our printouts. Let's go back to here. But for some reason, it doesn't think that we are. So let's have a look. For, with the input one, one, the output should be one number. No, it was zero. But even for this one, with the input one, output should be one. Now it contains zero. Okay, let's add um, an else if in. In fact, let's just test it quickly and see what happens. So if we put one and one in, let's see what we get printed out. Ah, so it prints nothing. So let's say um, if finish is greater than start, that's fine. Let's add in an else. So else if um, finish is equal to start. Oh, I've got my if. Um, S out zero. Let's see if that works. Well, that would be a string zero, so we'll need to output number zero. So let's let's just submit it. See how we go. Okay, so we've got another fail. That is not a problem. Let's have a look at the code and see what we can change. I'm going to simplify this and uh, give it another run. So let's have a go at that. And there we go, we've got it. So what I did was I changed the, so if I control Z it and undo it. So I removed this um, if else and I added in an equals here uh, and then ran that and that seemed to work quite nicely. So I'll delete this as well, just to make it a bit cleaner. Um, and then we can okay that and move on to the next bit. So let's close that. and then go back to the class. So let's just refresh that and make sure we've got both our points. Lovely. Okay. On stopping a loop execution. A loop does not stop, stop executing immediately when its condition evaluates to true. The loop's condition is evaluated at the start of the loop, meaning one, the loop starts for the first time, or two, the execution of a previous iteration of the body has just finished. So here we've got um, int number is equal to one, while it does not equal two, uh, system out print the number, 
number equals two, so it'll print two here, and then change that back to a one here. So actually, that'll keep keep iterating. Okay, so even though number equals two at one point, the loop runs forever because it doesn't actually equal two when it finishes the loop. Uh, so that number doesn't get updated to two, so it never equals two. The condition of a loop is evaluated when the execution of a loop starts and when the execution of the loop body has reached the closing curly brace or curly bracket. If the condition evaluates to true, execution continues from the top of the loop body. If the condition, condition evaluates to false, execution continues from the first statement following the loop. This also applies for for loops. In the example below, it would be incorrect to assume that the loop execution ends when i equals 100, but it doesn't. So for int i equals 0, i does not equal 100 i++. Plus plus. System out print uh, i, i is equal to 100, so here it will print out 0. Uh, i is equal to 100 here, so it will print out 100 there, and then i is set back to 0. The loop above never stops executing. So again, it's the same as the loop example above. Uh, you've created an infinite loop. One common subproblem type is to do something a certain amount of times. What's common to all these programs is repetition. Some functionality is done repeatedly, and a counter variable is used to keep track of the repetitions. The following program calculates the product 4 times 3 somewhat clumsily, i.e. as the sum 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. So we've got int result equals 0 and int i equals 0. While true, result plus equals 3, i++, plus plus, if i is equal to 4, break. So by the time that i has got to 4, this result would have been added uh, 4 times. Okay. The same functionality can be achieved with the following code. So int result is equal to 0 again, int i equals 0. While i is less than 4, result plus equals 3, so it would be updating this variable here and then i equals, uh, sorry, i++. Plus plus. So it will be 4, 1, 8, 2, 12, 3, 16, 4. Well, it wouldn't actually get to 4, would it? Because it stops when it's less than 3. Um, or by using a for loop as seen in the following statement. So int result is equal to 0, int i equals 0, i is less than 4, i++, plus plus, result plus equals 3. And then we've got this example that we can step through here. So here we've got the example that we can step through. So we've got uh, both variables set to 0, and then to 3 and 1, 6 and 2, 9 and 4, uh, 3, sorry, and then 12 and 4. So it's gone through four iterations of the loop because it started at 0, so it's gone through 0, 1, 2, three, four. Okay, so as the number of variables increases, understanding a program becomes harder. Simulating program execution can help in understanding it. You can simulate program execution by drawing a table containing a column for each variable and condition of the program. Add a separate space for the program output. You then go through the source code line by line and write down the changes to the state of the program, the values of each variable or condition and the program output. The values of variables result and i from the previous example have been written out onto the table below. At each point, the condition uh, i is less than four is evaluated. Okay, so there's the example there. And then here we've got our next programming exercise. Uh, what I'm gonna do is save this for the next part of the video. So I'll end here just because we're at just over half an hour. Um, and like I say, I should get this one sorted very soon within the next couple of days. So once again, as always, thank you very much for joining me. Um, if there's anything you want me to go over again, anything you're not sure of, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, failing that, I will certainly see you next time, and happy coding.